Welcome to that sewing lab with Alethea and Dawn. Alethea, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Alethea. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm Alethea. I'm the creator of So Much Talent. Uh, you can find me, as I always tell you, all over the place Instagram. You can find me Pinterest, which I don't use Pinterest. I don't even know why I have it. Uh, you can find me at Facebook. You can find me at so much And um, I am uh, in my real life, in my home life, I'm a creative specialist. I just make that up. <laughs> I'm a custom sewing operation specialist. That's what I do. I specialize in bridal wear, for wear. Um, I craft DIY all in between, whatever I find my hands to do. That's who I am. And Dawn. I'll just put I'll just put your um, your link, Alethea, into okay. the box at the side here, so people mm. can find it. Yay! And I'm Dawn. I have a blog called Dueling Designs, and each month we have a different challenge, and um, everyone else gets to vote on which design I make. And it's funny watching Rob's videos. I've been very inspired lately. Like the leather applique on the pillow. I'm like, oh, could I do that on a jacket? You know, quilting, you could probably do some kind of retro cool jacket. So very inspired uh, for our guests that we have today. But yeah, so I do a couple different sketches. Everyone votes on the one they like, and then I make it. So that's me. And we just lost Alethea. <laughs> can you hear us, Alethea? I can hear you and see you. I'm not sure what's happening with me tonight. I'm okay. just a big imagination. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Myra can see you, so it's all good. <laughs> I've seen okay, you on you Skype. See I know me. what you look like. <laughs> so if I do like this thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wish I could see you now. Worst case scenario, if we have too many problems, we'll, we'll remember we do our international symbol for refresh. <laughs> we'll get you to refresh if we have any more problems. But... Without further ado, um, say hello to everyone in the room. And um, yes, so come up with some of those questions in the side. I see Isla's already got one. So uh, Alethea and I will start off the questions and then we'll pull some of those in for Rob. So Rob is our guest for tonight, Rob Appel, and we're thrilled that he's here. <laughs> um, he's got an amazing YouTube channel. Um, it's funny, educational, easy to follow, and it covers a wide range of topics, really. Uh, but mostly and uh, quilting, which is fantastic, because I don't know enough about quilting, Rob. Yeah, I don't know and if anybody this can, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you also have a fabulous blog as well, <clears throat> and I'll, I can put the link up there as well. And uh, the audience can see behind you, there's one of your quilts. Um, would you like to tell everyone how you got into quilting or, or sewing even? Absolutely. Um, and I'll try to keep it brief because I'm quite the storyteller and uh, I have lots of them. But uh, when I, came, I, I was supposed to be going to college. You, listen carefully. I was supposed to be going to college, but instead I was living out of a Volkswagen bus, traveling around it and snowboarding and backpacking. And um, as I rolled back through California, my mom had bought a quilt shop. And after a couple of years of goofing around and um, enjoying the adventures on the road, uh, I decided I'd kind of settle in a little bit. And I actually started working in my mom's quilt shop while going back to uh, the junior college locally. And uh, kind of one thing led to another. And uh, funny enough, I actually became a sewing machine mechanic um, when we brought in a sewing machine dealership. And so I learned to work on sewing machines more from the inside out. And then when it became time to start being creative, I've always been artistic and I like to try doing things my own. Um, I wasn't as afraid of the machines. I didn't really know what I was doing sewing wise, but I knew that if I broke the machine, I could fix it. <laughs> oh, that is, you know, you had the confidence to have a play and, you know, give it a go. That's great. Yeah. It made so it when did you first fun. start sewing? When, when did, did you first start, start sewing? Yeah, first start sewing. Uh, my mom likes to call it doll clothes. But it really was, it was like tunics for my action figures. So at around five years old, I remember uh, my mom teaching me how to thread a needle and like little hand sewing little, like those little four inch action figures, not the big tall ones that are like Barbie height, but like the small ones. Okay. And uh, I remember to this day, I would take my mom's vitamin E at, before she would use it. And then I would poke a hole in it and I'd squeeze out the vitamin E. And then I would take elastic thread and I'd kind of stitch it. And I'd make these little gas masks for my 
my action figures out of the vitamin E caplets and elastic. And it would last about four days and the, the caplet would dry out and it would break and I'd have to make another one. And so that was, that was kind of how I got my start in uh, sewing. And then, Very creative. Yeah, had to make curtains for that van I was living out of. Uh, I do a lot with gear. So I did a lot of my first sewing was related to how to fix, mend, or alter some, some of my backpacking or snowboarding equipment. Wow. Uh, creative and resourceful. Mm -hmm. That's I'm a sure that's nice for cheap, Alethea. That's a really nice way of saying cheap, isn't it? You've got to clean it up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, it's, it's true, but actually when I got into my snowboarding sewing or the clothing, they didn't make snowboarding gear yet. Snowboarding was still like an outlaw sport. And so they hadn't gotten into it. And the only company that provided anything in polar fleece was uh, Patagonia. And so, and they were all waist length. They stopped at the waist. They didn't have any drawstring to keep the snow from going up your back. And, and the way you ride a snowboard and the way you don't ride a snowboard, you get a lot of snow in your pants and that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually modified some old sweatshirt patterns to make a very long polar fleece jacket with uh, drawstrings in it and stuff. So that was kind of how I got my start. Utilitarian. Oh yeah. yeah. You saw a need and you made something to fill the need. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. And how about quilting? I, I, I know it's called man sewing, your right. web page and everything, but it's not normally typically associated quilting in men. No. I mean, I don't know why not, right. but how did you get started? Well, and funny enough, we weren't even going to call the show man. Well, they want the, the, the Missouri Star Quilt Company has fostered this, this whole brand, and we can get into that later probably. But the reason I didn't call it man quilting because I'm much more of a man quilter than I am a man sewer was there's a gentleman named Matt Sparrow that already had the tag of man quilter. And I was really kind of uncomfortable even being man sewing. I didn't want to be stepping on his feet. He made a nice name for himself. And so like I was trying to be, you know, polite and, and give everybody, you know, their ability to make an income and make a, you know, a name for themselves out there. So quilting for myself started because I love to draw. And I had been watching, so my wife and I have been married, gosh, almost 18 years now. And we were given a wedding quilt, a uh, sampler quilt blocks from all the people in our family. And the machine wow. stitching was custom in all the blocks. And it was kind of panograph in the sashings between. And I remember once I was sitting there on the bed and I started kind of tracing the quilt stitching with my finger. And I was like, wow, this person actually manipulated the sewing machine over the entire <laughs> blanket to make all of this awesome. And I, I really got interested in doing free motion machine quilting. I wanted to see if I could draw with a needle and thread. So I made a quilt top so that I could quilt on it. And um, one thing led to another. Uh, and there weren't many men designing quilts. And I was very, 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 as I still am, remedial, basic in my design. Um, and so people kind of took to it because there's a lot of beginners out there that like the fact that I tell people I'm a professional. And then they look at the quality of what I do. And they're like, <laughs> you should see his stitches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had a lady just this morning on, on one of my free motion videos she asked me if i was using a stitch regulator and i'm thinking to myself obviously she has not watched the video you know <laughs> you know i, I define i define de uh, consistency in machine quilting stitches if every stitch is different in length so that's consistent <laughs> so, at, at any rate yeah i yeah. yeah, use that <laughs> every stitch is different so quilting kind of, yeah, I, I, I know you're trying to get the question out of me, and I'm sorry. I know it's a political year, and I'm not trying to drag the answers out here, but I got into quilting oh, yeah. because I wanted, to, um, I wanted to draw with needle and thread, and then I had to keep making these damn quilt tops to keep doing more machine quilting, more machine quilting, and I really fell, I fell in love with the craft. It's really fun. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful art. Uh, I think it's cool. Let me ask you something. Do since you've gotten into this, okay, it, it's really not many men, at least not many men in the forefront that's either quilting right. or sewing. You know, we just interviewed our first gentleman last week, uh, gentleman Jim. But since you are in this and you are sort of the uh, poster child for men sewing, I just named Thank you. that. <laughs> Have you tried to? bring other men in? Have, do you teach other men or are you associated with other men that either quilt or sew? Gosh, that's a, there's a lot of different ways to answer that question. Um, so I was hired by Missouri Star Quilt Company so that I would help reach that demographic. 
uh, because we know there are a lot of people, especially on the internet, that learn that, that, that feel they can learn a new craft in the privacy of their home, whether they're good at it or not, whether it's cool or not, whether they're male enough or female enough or not, they can try it, right? <laughs> and nobody's watching it. And, and so that was part of the whole concept behind man sewing was put somebody in front of a camera that could sew and could be entertaining, hopefully, and, and make it so that um, people felt comfortable. So yes, absolutely, males as a target audience for sure. Um, but funny enough, the reason I think I've been so successful is early on, I was one of the first men that was or first males, I guess I should say, that was noticed for doing it because my mom being a quilt shop owner, I went to quilt market as a buyer for our shop and as a sewing machine technician for the classes. And so I was kind of in this interesting world and I noticed right away people are like scratching their head going, why are you, and you like to sew, but you're a guy <laughs> and you're young and you surf and like, how does that work? And I realized it was the best marketing plan on the planet um, that, that I could, I could use the fact that I stood out like a sore thumb at, at a trade <laughs> show. Um, and, and I also, it was, it was at the point where quilting was art quilts were a four letter word. And quilts that went on the wall were not necessarily recognized by everybody as artwork. Some people just didn't like it if it wasn't a traditional quilt. And so there was a kind of uh, a little bit of a renaissance going on, you know, 15, 16, I guess I've been doing it almost 17 years now. Um, There's a bit of a renaissance going on in art, you know, the, from traditional to art quilts. And I kind of fell in right at that point too. So I didn't start quilting or sewing for that matter to get men involved. I became recognized and then selfishly, I wanted to be the only man involved because I wanted to be that sort <laughs> up. I wanted to be the person that got recognized. <laughs> now I have to say there's a lot of men involved and, and the designs and the concepts and their approach to sewing is really attractive to me. I, I like their different approaches. And now I can see why people were a little bit more attracted to my style because it was unique and different. So if anything, I'm a little bit nervous because I got to step my game up because there's all these other awesome <laughs> and they're not just men. There's other women out there that are fantastic, too, that are really pushing the envelope right now. And so uh, it, it's a challenge. So, um, yes, we are very excited. There are lots of men sewing. I want to say we have like 12 or 15 percent of our demographic right now are males from what we can track through like our Facebook and our newsletter and our YouTube and all of that. So that could equal. Wow. I mean, our newsletter goes out to over 100 thousand people already so that could be 10 12 thousand males something like that that are following along already so there's a lot of guys out there and i meet them every now and again and then we become buddies and it's really fun because we we, we stay connected and it's i met a guy that's really into crochet via facebook when i first started being man sewing um and we had a blast you know just chatting one night and about you know our, our being artists being males and, and in, a, in a, a world that wasn't necessarily designed that way and so yeah it's it's, it's fun it was I get, oh, sorry, I'll start talking in circles. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> you just can't leave us hanging. You can't just tell us there's a bunch of men out there sewing. Uh, where are they? I mean, yeah. Are they like it? <laughs> well, okay, so the first men I would see sewing were the men that were coming in with their late, especially quilting, they were the husbands. And they had yeah. been in charge of fixing enough quilt patterns for their wives so their wives could finish the pattern that they finally wanted to decide what this quilting's all about. So I would start meeting the guys that would come in and they like the engineering of it and the, or the color of it. And then the ladies like the construction. And then as long arm, oh. and I, we see a lot of lit men in long arm quilting. So we get a lot of guys out there. The one long arm quilting became a much more of a household power tool. We started getting a lot. Of them. I went to a, a port, uh, well, it was a MQX up in Salt Lake City about a year ago. And it was a lot of men, both displaying their quilts, uh, showing in their booths, uh, representing companies. There was a lot of males there. And that was really cool. Um, I think they're hiding. I think that they don't, they don't feel real comfortable. I mean, if they could only understand how many phone numbers they could, they could get just by, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Secret society of so many men. Right. Right. Okay. We're going to find Find there is a that's very very cool, uh, Facebook group called uh, Men Who Quilt, and there's a couple of other web pages out there that have um, quilting, you know, males. And I don't know if they're also into sewing as well. And I, and I actually 
don't pursue that as a genre. I just pursue all over quilting. So I don't, I know about some of these groups, but I'm sure there are more that I don't know about too. Well, we won't tell them you spilled the beans on where we can find that's them. Right. Men who quilt. Is that <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that's the one on Facebook. And, and it's a pretty strong group. And uh, some of their members showed up at one of my gigs recently. And we had a lot of fun. And so then they've been sending some nice pictures around on some of the projects. And, and the Men Who Quilt Facebook page has become very supportive of man sewing. It's been fun. Wow, that's so awesome. Very interesting to know. And uh, so I'm definitely going to be on the prowl. Yeah. Because I would love to see. You know, we're so busy. I mean, when you think about sewing, it's associated with women, right. you know, or young kids, or you know, even maybe little boys. You know, but you know, it's not pushed enough out there that anybody can sew. You know, right. so this is very interesting to hear you say that there is really a society out there of men who are sewing and enjoying it. Yeah, you know, it's 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 really cool, and I get a kick out of it because I live in a beach town. You know, like I said, I love to surf. And a lot of the, the, the sail makers are men. Um, I, I've worked with upholsterers, you know, and I don't know if it's just because of the nature of the, the beast, literally, of moving the furniture around, that kind of stuff. One of my, the earliest people I knew from sewing was, was a upholsterer. Um, you know, uh, in, in fishing, especially within fishing, there's a lot of knot tying and nets and stuff. And I look at all that as sewing. So I think sometimes we, we think of sewing as like putting ruffles on the back of your socks or something. And I don't think that that's necessarily, you know, like today I was because of my whole knitting craze, right. I got a, this, this bucket was my protein powder or whatever it was. And I had to make something I could put my sticks in and my needles and my crochet hook and my ball of yarns in here, you know? And so I just made this little cool pocketed thing with elastic so I can take it on and off to go on my cup so that my, my knitting tools are all handy. And so I like that kind of sewing. I like going, Oh, what do I got laying around? I got to make this out of a little, you know, something or another. Yeah. The when you have a need. Is the yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah. <laughs> so you've been mentioning Missouri quilts, like uh, what other kind of opportunities and things like that? Like when you started, you probably didn't picture this, this kind of route for your life. What kind of, um, main milestones have you hit and things that are exciting just through sewing? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> okay. Let me make sure I understand the question. Kind of the, the history and the timeline of exciting events that have happened in my life. Is, is that what you're asking here? Uh, yes. um, well, like my, my mom, when I came back from this road trip, living out of the van time, my mom had bought into a quilt shop that was opened in 1969. So at this point, the shop is still open. It's in its third family's hands, but because we've now since wow. sold it. But I mean, that's pretty cool to be, you know, part of a shop that's over 40 years old. Um, because of my mom's involvement, sorry, I, I heard doors opening. It's on. I told the kids I got a little quiet on the set on the other side of the door. So. <laughs> uh, because uh, you too. Yeah, exactly. Well, the kids are getting home from school anytime now. Uh, <laughs> so um, because of my mom's involvement, we really knew a lot of the cool industry people. And so like um, one of the big things for me, I'll, I'll just give you a couple of quick stories if I can. Uh, meeting um, Philip Hoffman. Philip Hoffman is known in the world of surfing. He was one of the original longboard. Him and his brother, Walter, traveled to Hawaii to be become big wave surfers. Then they decided they could make fabric. So Walter stays on in Hawaii and makes all the cotton rayon blends that we see as the wonderful Hoffman Hawaiian shirt fabrics. Philip comes back to the U S and keeps traveling into Bali to surf and develop, develops boutiques, finds boutiques in Bali, you know, so this whole awesome history. And wow. I got to meet him and, and talk about abalone diving and surfing with, with him at the middle of this <laughs> giant trade show in Houston, you know, the international quilt market. And here, Philip Hoffman and I are sitting there talking about fantastic surf spots hidden up and down the coast of California. And um, <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was really, really exciting. Um, getting to travel uh, to New York to sign contracts for when I created a fabric line. My, my son was four, uh, four months old. We went to Manhattan to sign fabric uh, contracts back at that point with like free spirit fabrics. Um, mm -hmm. But then that led me to a great relationship with Michael Miller Fabrics. And, um, you know, I still work for them constantly. I use a lot of their cloth. So meeting some really neat people along the way. Um, 
a big thing in my life. I do a lot of sisters outdoor quilt show that happens in sisters, Oregon. Um, and my mom wanted to take me to a, an out a show just kind of so I could see what quilts were really all about. And we went up to sisters before I was even involved in the shop and fell in love with that whole community up there. And I think this will be my ninth year teaching in sisters this summer and uh, wow. part of the team. And I actually am uh, the feature, one of the featured exhibits, they have all these different exhibits around during the show day of Saturday. And uh, the, I get to be the inspirational instructor this year, which is quite an honor. And so, you know, going from the full circle of showing up there and, and seeing quilts hanging outside to then putting quilts outside and teaching people that put their quilts outside to then being you know, one of the instructors that people get to see all my quilts back hanging outside. That'll be really cool. Um, oh, yeah. Traveling and teaching has been really incredible. I've met so many neat people. Um, I'm a very anxious person. I'm a very high energy kind of twitchy person and I've learned to kind of try to settle in and, and when I'm on the road, I don't often know what to do with myself. And so I get invited to do a lot of cool things. And so I've just kind of learned to say yes. And, um, I've, I've spent a couple of weeks on Orcas Island from a, a wonderful family that invited me to come see where they homesteaded 120 some years back. And, you know, just turned into this wow. fantastic, they, they threw a picnic in my honor and when people came on <laughs> sailboats to the dinner and brought crab legs, I mean, just really wow. neat experiences all based around the textiles a little bit. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of now, I have uh, just over four years and two months as a recovering alcoholic. And so when I travel and I teach and I get up on my stage and I present, uh, I get to talk about kind of the change. Uh, and, and at that same point in my life of getting over the booze was going from being a quilt maker to show off uh, to a quilt maker that now I use my art to education. I do a lot of philanthropy with my quilts. And so that whole, now it's my biggest massive milestone. And once I came to terms with the addiction and started fighting it and sharing it with people, I feel like the Lord has really blessed me and, and my career has just exploded since then. So that's, that's probably my favorite milestone. Wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. yeah. That is amazing. I saw your blog post when you were writing about that and how you go camping. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was fabulous. That was really neat, especially <laughs> to get to go with my 12-year-old son this year for our first our first time, just dad and, and son out there backpacking together. That was awesome. That was really cool. Does he surf as well? He's learned. He learned last summer, and uh, both my daughter, and she's she's 10 years old, and she surfs as well. And I, they've legitimately caught three or four really good waves. I've seen them ride. Um, last summer was pretty pretty fun. Uh, we, the waves were perfect for learning. We were able to borrow some of those big foamy – fun sheet board. So it was really good for the kids to learn on. And we spent a lot of time in that ocean last summer. It was great. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Our ocean where I live is really cold water. So like just to get them out there for 45 minutes at a time before they turn purple is really a, that, that's <laughs> an accomplishment in itself. That's just hardening them up. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. We tell the kids, if you can learn to surf around here, you can do anything in life, man. Yeah. The water's like 55, 52 degrees, somewhere in there. And it just gets mean. <laughs> Uh, well, I have a question for you, yeah. Rob. Well, actually, I, I can think of many questions I have for you. They're just rolling in my head. But <laughs> your mother started, she opened the quilt shop, right? She, she took Did it she over ever? as a manager. She was a manager of, a, of an existing shop. Okay. So did she? quilt and did she was she surprised that you took this as far as you did this is she surprised at the path that you have taken with this uh, I don't think she's surprised I think she's very honored um, she does not quilt she's into home decor she's a designer and she loves doing uh, putting rooms together she loves to sew curtains and pillows uh, duvets those kinds of things that's what she prefers so I was kind of the quilting with another one of our quilting instructors at our shop. Like I was like sewing machines with my department. We had a quilting instructor, but I drifted that way. And then my mom was really in charge of the home decor. Um, no, she would always take my crazy weird drawings and scribbles. Every time a fabric rep would come to our shop to sell us fabric, she'd be like, my son drew this. And like, you know, like <laughs> maybe he could be a fabric designer one day. And so she started, and I think she kind of drug me into it. I might've even been kicking and screaming a little bit at the beginning. Um, she knew I was artistic and she knew I was too much of a free bird to really probably keep a real job down. And so she, she helped got set the path for sure. Probably cause she knew where I'd be most successful. Um, but I don't think she's surprised. I think she's tickled for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. That's all, I mean, I would be a proud mama, you know, my son, he's quilting, he's sewing. I mean, you've not just 
it's not you're not just sewing and you're not just quilting in your own home, but you have created a path, you know, and doors have opened. So that leads me to my next question. How did you initially connect with Missouri Craft? Uh, what is it? Missouri Quilt. Right, Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, I, I, one of those fantastic, not what you know, but who you know situations. Um, they had seen, so, so all two minutes of the Missouri Star Quilt Company, they accidentally started an internet business that blew up and now they are the <laughs> biggest de deal in the internet and now almost in brick and mortar as well. So they, they, had, they bought a box of pre-cuts, jelly rolls, let's call them. They thought they were buying mm -hmm. a jelly roll, but they bought like a case. And it, instead of buying six jelly rolls, they bought six cases. And so they decided, to, wow. you know, like, we got to sell this stuff. So like, we'll put it on the internet. We'll sell it off the internet. And they, they couldn't sell it. So they're like, so one of the kids, they, uh, they have several children. And one of the kids says, well, let's make these tutorials. Let's put an online tutorial. And, and the mom, who is the star, Jenny Doan is her name, says, well, sure, Al, I'd be happy to do that. But what's a tutorial? And they said, here, you stand here, make a project, we'll film it. And so they started filming. Um, yeah, there she is on the screen there. So they started filming this about seven years ago. And we immediately realized that her quick and easy approach to making traditional looking quilts, easy piece quilts, was really fun, was very successful, gave us a great way to do It's on YouTube, so it's free. So what we do is we get all of these free lessons, but then we have the products for sale if you want to purchase them, but you, mm -hmm. we always try to do it so you can do it out of your stash. We always like, that's one of my hardest things is I create templates. So on my videos, I have the free templates below that you can print out because I want you to be able to do this out of your own stash. It's not to, just to make money, but in order to pay for the channels, we sell our fabrics and our patterns and our tools to help, you know, pay for the channel. Um, and so Missouri star saw, or as I tried to mention earlier, the need for, other channels, one, in case anything ever happened to Jenny, they now went from a company of like five family members working out of a basement together to now they're at over 220 employees. And, and they're in a uh, town of only 1,800 people. So over, you know, 10% of the town works for them. And they, they are very dedicated to that longevity of all of those families and the business. I mean, they do, they take very, very nice care of their employees. And so part of it was we have to have other brands in case anything were ever to happen to our number one source of advertising, which is Jenny and her free tutorials. So then they started looking, well, where do they, and they wanted me to do garment. So they hired me and they said, okay, if you could do mostly craft sewing and garment. And I said, are you kidding me? Garment for free in an eight minute tutorial is going to be impossible. And it's like, how many different left pockets can I show you how to put on? Because that's all we can do in eight minutes. You know, I mean, Alethea, you know, like because of the pattern and the fitting and like, I mean, it, I mean, oh my gosh, this is a box set of DVDs. This is not an eight minute tutorial. And even my eight minute, right. and those that watch the channel, they're laughing right now because they're like, his eight minute tutorials are 25 minutes long anyways. So, you know, if, if I get into garment, it's just, is really, it's really tricky. And so I kind of said, okay, well, could I do some of the quilting on the channel? And um, so that was kind of how it went, but the back to the, not what you know, but who you know, um, my mom's one of her very best friends is named Nancy Rosenberger. And she is the buyer now for Missouri Star Quilt Company and was involved in the industry, both on manufacturing side, as well as had a quilt shop as well. And so when she knew they were looking for a male to stand behind the camera that could sew, she said, you ought to give Rob a shot. And so they gave me a, a couple of interviews and, and things went very well. And um, it, 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 I really feel, and I've heard rumor has that Jenny says this, that we're really, it's meant to be. I mean, we have so much fun working together and we are just, they are the neatest family. I just can't say enough nice things about them. So I feel very blessed to have fallen into this role. So, yeah, I didn't design it, but I certainly am pleased. I told him, hey, I'm on the 10-year plan. You don't have to worry about anything. As long as I can keep making stuff up, I ain't going anywhere. They're like, oh, whoops. There you go. Yeah. Well, I love it that you enjoy what you do. You know, you really enjoy. And it comes across in your, your YouTube channels. And I think that's what draw people to you because it's not just, oh, here you go, step one, you know, flip this over, step two. You know, it's just you bring a excitement to it and so i that's what glued me into it what is rob gonna do today well what? but i was gonna say 
Oh, oh go ahead. I was just I was gonna say thank you for the compliment. I, I you know I grew up on Saturday Night Live, so I wanted it to find you know I didn't want it to be as dumb as Saturday Night Live, but I wanted it to be like that unexpected. Like I I always remember the Saturday Night Live commercials where you're like, is that a real commercial? Like. Is he really, did he just really say that or show that that way? <laughs> but uh, at the same right. point, um, I do almost all of my own sewing. Not only do I do all the design work, but I do almost all of the construction. Every now and again, I'll fall behind on a project. So I'll have some of the parts and pieces made. Or I've had a, of all the quilts I've shown. I think I've had three of them machine quilted by Missouri Star. Because um, they had offering a, a quilting service as well. But my, my most of the time I do all the machine quilting and everything. But to turn out a tutorial a week that way is crazy. But it's really important to me to be sewing all of the projects myself because I feel like that's how I really become one with the process. And that's where all the comedy comes from. Like I, I really do sew yeah. things in my shirt and stuff, but I'm not paying attention. So. And I'm sorry I leave that. <laughs> I had to mention that. That's, that's no. what makes it real is it's I'm really doing this stuff. I love it. It's cool. And I that's what, like I said, that's what draw people. I mean, that's what drew me because you, you know, you get, you have the monotony of sewing. You have the monotony, like I said, of one, two, three steps. But to add a little bit of comedy in the mix, I mean, it's comic relief. I mean, sometimes like what, what I did, it can be kind of stressful, you know. So to have somebody, you know, you get a little bit of laugh to it. It's good for me. Yeah, we've tried to eliminate some of no. the surprise attacks from jumping out from behind the table and stuff because um, <laughs> I had a couple people said they spit coffee on their computers and they were thinking they could, they could trade me one of my quilts for their, their new circuit board or something like that. I'm like, I <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful when watching my videos. You just never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> Don, please forgive me. I'm sorry. And I'm going to flip this back over to you, but I, you have one video that really caught my attention. And it's simply because I have not heard many people talk about this and it's your Quillo. All right. You did a tutorial <laughs> on the, my boys right now, well, my young men, I have a 24 year old and a 17 year old. And when they were little, I made them a Quillo. And in between that time and now, I only once within the last year, have I heard anybody else talk about a Quillo. Right. Can you talk about that and explain to our audience what a Quillo is? Yeah, and I'm, I'm dying because it's locked in that giant case over there behind Jerry Garcia. And if I get out of my chair, you'll lose the show. So I'm staying still because I'd love to show the Quillo. But um, maybe Don maybe Don can put up a link or something. But um, So the, do you want to know about the construction of the Quillo or why did I decide to do a Quillo for man sewing or both? Well, just tell them what a okay. quillow is because, you know, like me, it's a very cool idea. Yeah. But you, and it, I think any, everybody should, even adults should have a quillow. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, but uh, just tell them what that is and, and the concept behind so it. So a quillow is technically a pillow that unfolds into a quilt or a quilt that folds up and forms a pillow. So they're great for keeping in your car. They're great for storage. They're great for... Um, you know, just about anything. You can see the picture there. Uh, you can see the front is the quilt where the diamond is, is the pillow front. And so the full the quilt would be folded into thirds and then folded backwards like a sandwich bag and, and forms into the quillow. Um, and they used to be done when they would put out these, what we'd call them a pillow panel. So it would be this cool print, like a, a scene of a whales and dolphins, or maybe it'd be a scene of a, of a, a, right now there's a couple really cool ones that are like a wolf head with the trees behind it. And they were like a 14 or 16 inch square. So then you'd find fabric that looked like it went with it. You'd make very simple quilts and then you'd have this like pillow that unfolded and they were great. And they also were a little more masculine approach to quilts. And so a lot of guys got a quillow when a girl would get an afghan or something, a doily. You know? <laughs> and so quillows were cool for dudes, basically. And so because of the print and the, the thing, it was more utilitarian. I saw a lot of them originally made out of denim. You know, you throw them in your camping supplies stuff. And um, I actually did it for two parts. Um, I was standing with a group of young ladies who are very successful uh, quilt educators. And they were talking about bringing the quilted vest back. And I don't know if they were being polite or facetious. I'm not sure what they were doing with that. <laughs> but in, in laughter, I had mentioned in another one of my videos, I'd use this fabric for, to make a quillow originally, or it was designed originally to make a quillow. And so 
I said, well, if you ladies are bringing back the quilted garments, then I'm bringing back the quillow. Uh, but then as I decided to do this, and this is all that Michael Miller cotton couture, it's all solid fabric. And I had been really practicing my free motion machine quilting. I had gotten a new machine that's a sit down machine and it's glorious to quilt on. And so I thought I could make this look like a modern kind of a, a racing stripe quilt. Machine quilted just awesome, in my opinion. I, I had a lot of fun machine quilting it. And then yet still make a fun tutorial and a utilitarian project out of the deal. And it was supposed to be on the couch for the kids. And I literally, it's the first quilt I actually took out of the travel box and I put it on the couch for all of us to enjoy. And it lasted two days and I couldn't stand it. And I folded it back up and I put it back. On the travel box, but I couldn't <laughs> let go of it as a piece of art. I just couldn't. I couldn't make it a utilitarian project. <laughs> Yeah, it. It. No, thank you. Yeah, pizza night comes on Friday. It's Friday night, it's a pizza and a movie. So I think I had it off the couch by Thursday afternoon. <laughs> it stays up for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know what's so about it is it when I made my quillows, uh, each one of my boys, like I say, had one, but it was a nice little carrying bag. So I was able to tuck like the diapers, the uh, bottle of milk, and you know just the necessities in it. So it it acted as a dual purpose you know the pillow and the blanket right. and a carry-all for the little you know trinkets that they needed to have right. and so um it, it was multi-purpose so that's why i appreciated it so i've much. got to write down an idea you just gave me for another tutorial because i've seen a quillow <laughs> that is a short version that goes over the back of your beach chair for all of your gear and you make it out of a beach towel oh. so I'm, I'm, excuse me real quick while i write the next show here yeah, beach chair quillow. Okay, <laughs> you'll see it in a, in a couple of months now. Oh, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool idea. Actually, we saw them years ago in Florida, and we kind of mocked up a couple. And and they're yeah, put all your valuables in it. And everything. It's it's really cool. And what it is is the pillow part now goes over the back of the chair. So you know how your your towel always slides down in your lawn chair or your chase lounge or whatnot. Uh, it's mm -hmm. in place. Awesome. Can't wait to see yeah, that one. Yeah. It's very clever. <laughs> I wrote it down, so now I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> there so you how go. about the future, Rob? What do you see in the future? Do you have things that you'd like to do, or are you just more or less, you know, know you're on the right path and ready for anything that comes at you? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. Well, um, I it might have even been you, ladies, when we did our practice interview a couple days ago. I was telling that I decided that I'm a living vacation right now. <laughs> I had a bunch of really good surf early on last week and through the weekend and I'd been on the road a bunch and I came home and I was getting good exercise. I was just, it was one of those days where, excuse me, I just felt like my body felt good. Like my, my muscles were tight. I, I, I'd worked out a bunch, you know, and I was in the sewing room and I was thinking to myself, man, this just feels like a, a great day of vacation where I've got my favorite clothes on, I'm, I'm clean, I'm showered, I'm exercised, and I can do whatever I want for the rest of the day. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I do this every day. Like I literally, I get up, and I <laughs> take the kids to school and I surf and I, I spend all day being creative and it's wonderful. So I don't want that to go too fast. So I, I don't look too much into the future because I'm really feeling blessed every day. Um, my wife is a school teacher and I have to be careful because I'm very tempted to, to get into this road schooling idea. I would love to throw the family in a motorhome for a year and travel <laughs> around doing, you know, different gigs and teaching and, and, you know, mountain biking, kayaking, surfing all around the U S uh, with my kids at 10 and 12 would be the perfect age. Um, if we don't do it while the kids are in high school, we'll do it when the kids are in college and the kids are gone and my wife and I are doing it. That's kind of our, our retirement goal is to, to, to travel around a little bit. And then I also have, I love to backpack and I'd love to eventually say I've done a good portion of the Pacific Crest Trail. That's like one of those future goals that, um, we talk about, my kids are two years apart. So theoretically my son could be in between his like junior college and, and university. My daughter could have just graduated from high school. My wife could be retiring because my gig is going so well, which means I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. And so all four of us can set out and do a good portion of the, of the PCT, I think would be really awesome. That's the trail that goes from, you know, uh, Mexico all the way to Canada. And um, I would probably, I would focus on Northern California and Oregon portion of that and Washington. I just think that'd be, that'd be a cool thing for the future. And uh, until then, every Monday is another tutorial on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be watching. Yes. 
Is that is that walk the trail? Is that the one that Reese Witherspoon did in the movie Wild? Uh, uh, yes, it was that? Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah, there, there's a lot of riding. Oh, th yeah, that looks gorgeous. It is. It's incredible countryside, and it's it's quite a journey. Um, uh, and then they want into the water. Uh, is it into the wild? No, that happened in Alaska, I think. There's um, the one that Bill Bryson did, uh, Walk in the Woods. That one's out on the Appalachian Trail, and that's out on the East Coast. So mm, okay. yeah, I'm really, oh. I'm really attracted to the Pacific Northwest. So I wouldn't mind walking through it for several months. Oh, that'd be crazy. Yeah. yeah it'd be really, really exciting. <laughs> um, we have a question from our audience that kind of fit in with what you were saying a little bit. Right. Um, they wanted to know if your wife quilts when you were talking about that she was working. Right. Um, does she quilt as well? Uh, she doesn't quilt. She knows how to sew. She comes up with some sort of great sewing project almost every Christmas time so that we can make, you know, we do almost all of our uh, gifts. We make them ourselves. So she definitely does like placemats. Uh, she's wicked with a polar fleece scarf, um, but she hasn't made her own quilt yet. My daughter just completed her first ever quilt that she stitched all by herself. She did stitch in the ditch. I taught her how to put the binding on. My son has done wow. some quilting um, patchwork and stuff. But yeah, we all know how to sew. Um, but my wife says she would love to quilt, but she's, she's so busy with her job that at, and the last thing she wants to do at night is get involved in the studio where I'm in here like a bull in a China shop making, making a mess. But, uh, yeah, she's very artistic. She does a lot of, uh, she does a lot with dance. That's probably her primary form of art right now. Oh, yeah. cool. Do you, do you think your kids would ever end up being in front of the camera as well? This summer, Are yeah, you? this summer actually, um, the Missouri Star uh, team have actually offered to take us all back to Missouri, and my daughter's hopefully going to do two tutorials, and my son oh, cool. really enjoys filming. He makes a lot of his own movies. He makes, um, he's done a couple documentaries already, so he plans to work wow. with camera. He wants to run the main camera back on the set. We usually shoot with between three to five cameras at a time, so he wants to go back and operate one of the cameras. So this summer in August, they'll be in Missouri with me uh, playing along. So, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. A family affair. Absolutely. See, and I think, Love it. so I just had a retreat, a four day sewing retreat a couple of weeks ago. And this was the first year that they were old enough to be at the retreat as helpers, as well as, as guests. And they came and they worked and they did a fantastic job. That's my daughter did her quilt. That's where my son learned to knit because I learned to knit the week before. So we were knitting at night and he would got involved with me. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, I, that's why I kind of think about this road schooling thing where we can really do quite nicely as the family that, you know, shows together, but also, you know, travels together. And we're really a tight knit family as it is. A little pun. Oh, that's so oh, cool. That's yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, we have another question from Isla. Um, a man that sews, how cool is that? How did you get started with, with regard to quilting? How did you get started? Oh, I guess. You kind of covered that earlier. Yeah, I think she was uh, trying she to probably ask that one earlier. Yep, I saw that one come through. Yeah. Well, lucky we answered that for you. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, this one. This is a great question because I have my eyes on one of your shirts already, oh, yeah. the red one. <laughs> yeah. Did you create your T-shirt? Can you let us see it? Yes. So how did you end up making your own shirts? Did you design it yourself? Um, no, actually, that's the benefit of working with a team. We have we have a whole graphics design team. And uh, so when I first was hired for Missouri Star, I took uh, we did like a video interview like this with the whole group of people and just wrapped for like two hours just talking and getting to know each other. And then Nick uh, at that point was kind of the lead uh, of the whole graphics team. And he came up with this. So I've got this logo. There's a hand needle that's the shape of a lightning bolt with a thread coming through it and then we have a flame and pair of scissors one. and um so uh all three of those are different icons that we use and different logos that we use right now we have the sewing machine shirt and we have the nar we call it the gnarly needle and uh if anybody wants a funny little three minute video on um on the youtube channel too i play all four different parts at the same time wearing this different shirts and we do a, a vote for your favorite t-shirt contest and um, oh. it's pretty hilarious. So I'm right now petitioning that we go to all black shirts with just the white logos of everything because it's hard to get the colors right and it's hard to get the right, you know, all the sizes and all the colors and all that. So that's my new thing is I want to just go all black and white for the next year and see what happens. But yeah, you can well, they're all them. cool t-shirts. You can buy them at Missouri Star. I'm sorry, what's that, Althina? Althina Star. They're all cool t-shirts. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
I had a good friend, Althina, so I always want to call you Althina instead of Alethea. I'm sorry, I slipped on that one. <laughs> That's okay. I get called a little bit of everything, just as long as you're not cussing. That's good. <laughs> And yeah, we had a couple of people ask about your t-shirt, so it's very popular. And that's, we're not asking that yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Someone wanted your phone number. I didn't see anything. No, I didn't <laughs> see anything. <laughs> that's never happened. My husband's in the room. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> moving on. Business, right? I do love that. <laughs> that's, it, it, don't feel bad. I she do love give her phone number. So she's not giving it out online there, guys. <laughs> I'm living in Canada. So. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, gosh. I've, I've only made um, uh, one quilt, and um, it's nothing like the gorgeous quilts that you do, Rob. Um, I definitely think it's really exciting. And um, as I was saying earlier, I think before we started filming, um, I think it's quite inspirational. Like there's a lot of things on your channel that even if you're a, uh, more of a garment sewer, that could really spark a lot of ideas and great tips, like you know, making your own portable sewing, uh, um, ironing board. And I do love the idea of um, somehow using your the pillow that you did the leather appliques on. Right. And you sewed across them. That would be kind of neat if you could do it on little bits on the jacket as well. That would be really interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, what kind? What kind of project do you have in the in the future that you're really excited about? Um, my, I, I'm so I I, mean, I got a seatbelt on right here because it's like just out of arm's reach. <laughs> oh. I, I started goofing around. It's like a modern yo-yo quilt. Uh, should I should I go get it for show and tell real quick? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, be I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, man. Are you all enjoying that? That is so cool. He, he keeps you in stitches, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry. I mean, that looks lovely. So, <laughs> the, funny thing, the funny thing is, is it's like 3D circles. And I use bosal foam. If you don't know what bosal foam is, it's this foam and it's rigid. So it stands up and they're actually like three dimensional. I don't know if you can see them sideways. So yeah, I yeah. basically made individual circles and backed them and everything. And then I just stitched them together on top of each other for this awesome wall hanging. And of course, you know, it's kind of the fabric makes part of it too, because it's this really wow. geometric fabric. But I'm really, I think that could be a killer new project for us because I love working with circles. I think. You can make them really easy. You can grow that quilt big. It doesn't have to be quilted because the edges are all finished. The bosal foam makes it textural. So I'm really excited about that. Now I want to get one of those, um, like a color gradient of the 10 inch squares. Like let's say just all greens, right? And then take them and then make each circle of a different shade of green and have like the color story just be told like in a monochrome in all solids. Then you could quilt each of the circles as its own little, you know, doily or what am I, a coaster or whatever. You could quilt however you wanted to. Then when you assemble it, maybe the quilting could do. And then I also see ideas of laying it all together and quilting it all at once. So the quilting runs through it, even though it's stepping down from one side to the next. And so I just oh, made that a few days ago and I'm really pumped up about it. So will you do a tutorial on that one eventually? Yes. Uh, so what, oh, yeah. Um, the only thing that I've made recently that probably won't be a tutorial is today's little yarn bucket thing. And it was supposed to be a tutorial, but it just didn't, didn't make much sense because I didn't, I, I put a pocket in it, but when it's on here, you can't open the pocket because it, I made it wrong. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, the other one, uh, the circle quilt is definitely designed to be a tutorial. Most all of my sewing I do right now is as a tutorial in mind. Okay. Okay. And you say those tutorials come out every Monday, right? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. If, yeah, they actually launch late at night in the middle of the night on Sunday. If you're paying, paying if you're on the East Coast or if you're in Hawaii, <laughs> they come out at dinner time on Sunday night. If I get them about ten o'clock on the East Coast, so this is a great question. Kevin, are we supposed to answer this one here? Yeah, you are definitely a high energy guy. I love that about yeah. you. you. Just kind of jump out of it. You know, we're all in these little box, and you're coming out of the box like it's like virtual reality without the Oculus Rift glasses. Right. <laughs> Um, so do you ever wind up one wind up one project and start on another without finishing the first because the new one caught your interest? Um, 
it's a really funny thing about my personality. I do not do well with unfinished projects at all. It drives me mad. <laughs> so one of the things I struggle with is when I'm sewing my projects for man sewing. So I go back to Missouri. I'm in California. I go back to Missouri one week out of every eight weeks. So while I'm there, I have to have everything to film for between 10 and 12 tutorials. Mm. So that means a lot of weeks I'm creating two tutorials in a week at home because I'm on the road half the time when I'm at home too. So there mm. are days when I get boxes of supplies and I open up the box and it's all different projects. And I feel like I have to make all those projects right now because all of the projects <laughs> are here. And my heart starts to pound and I get all sweaty and I get weird and I freak out and I turn into a jerk and I just get really nervous. And so I learned early on, I have plastic bins. And so each project, even if it's just notes, even if it's just a label or whatever, it goes into a plastic bin. So everything gets compartmentalized for the, that sewing session of, of that two months. Everything is, you know, for 10 weeks or 12 projects or whatever it's going to be. Then I can take them in and out of my closet as I need to sew on them. So during man sewing, I, I juggle. So the last two sessions I did project, step outs, projects, step outs, projects, step outs. And I was really in a rush at the end. So this cycle, I'm making projects, 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 projects. Then I'm on the road a bunch and I'm home for like two days at a time, three days at a time. And that's when I'll do all the step outs because it's easier to make the step outs because you're only making parts and pieces. But when I'm on project mode, I don't want to stop. So having three full focus days makes my life easier. It keeps me from being a stress ball. So learning how to handle my ADHD, my OCD, which I think if I rearrange all those initials would say something cool, I'm pretty sure of it. But yeah, um, yeah so that's, I, I, I don't actually, there's one Hawaiian shirt I never finished. It was a bamboo print. When I put it all together, it looked like bamboo camouflage done wrong. And it was just not okay. So I never finished the hands on it. I never put the pockets on it and stuff. But yeah, for the most part, I really do start to finish almost every project. Um, most of the projects come up, you know, I have so much time in my brain while I'm working on the project in my hands that by the time I start sewing, I generally pull it off um, with pretty much success. Even the lady Nancy I mentioned when I was saying, oh, I need this and this and this amount of yardage. She's like, well, don't you practice the project first on any other fabric? I'm like, no, I don't have time to practice. I got to get it right on the first time out of the, out of the gun. And um, or goof around a little bit. Like I was killing a half an hour while I was waiting for our interview today. So that's why I made my little yarn bucket bag thing. And that was just a goof off project that made no difference how the day went with that. You know, I'd already done all my quilting this morning for for today. So um, I, you know, I go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say I found that really interesting, Rob, because I don't know. Maybe I, I, I sometimes because my husband's so calm, you know, and I get stressed out. And he always seems to be calm. So I, I never actually. We always ask our guests. How do you deal with balancing all these things in the air? How do you do the work-life balance? Because we're interested as, as people who have that issue. But I never thought of asking you. You just seem together, relaxed, and happy. So I never imagined you being stressed at times, which is not doing you justice because you are really busy. Right. So it's so interesting to hear you talk about that and how you actually do get stressed out and how, you know, organizing things is one of the ways that helps you. Do you have anything else that you do to help you when you get stressed out? I do. And I'll, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, exercise is really good. You know, I do a little bit, uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a Christian, so I do a devotion in the morning and I do some stretching before I either go surf or go run something to get my heart, heart pounding a little bit. Um, it's funny. The stress comes from an emotional side of things versus a, it's a timeline that I was sewing. It's really hard to predict how long it's going to take. Yeah. Because <laughs> I do all my own machine quilting. Sometimes the machine quilting can take an extra two days and that can really mess up the timeline. So that stress mostly comes from that calendar side. As an artist, so that I don't stress out about the requirements of being an artist, the, the using your emotional release to do things that would hopefully be recognized. One is, and Jenny Doan taught me this, and I've, I've done a lot of research from other performers. You got to have thick skin. You, you can't get caught up in the critic's math. You, you can't let one negative comment 
or 10 negative comments ruin your day because at the end of the day, maybe they want to share their idea and somebody's just trying to teach somebody else their idea of doing it. Maybe they couldn't hear and it, on the video. Maybe you went too fast. Maybe you did confuse them. Maybe they shouldn't be sewing. I don't know what it is, but, <laughs> but so I, I used to like get really wrapped up because I read all of the feedback and I, I try to use that to grow from, from thing to thing. So I don't, get wrapped up at the end of the day anymore if somebody has something negative to say because i get so much positive feedback that i just go read and i just go read some other comments somewhere yeah. um, but the other thing i've learned to do as an artist that makes a, a living as an artist is i don't do all of my art as my job so i'm always working on some sort of art project that is for me and i don't care how it turns out or i don't care what anyone else thinks it's just mine and so the yep. last couple of years, I built an electric guitar. I bought one of these build your own guitar kits and cool. I assembled it and I played it for a year and I fell in love with it, but it had really crummy electronics. So I took it all apart. I put in all really good electronics and I did all the, all the woodworking and everything on this guitar. And so I play guitar. So that's one of my things I do when I'm not doing quilts and things, but I don't play professionally and I'm not allowed to sing in public. So it's just a matter of <laughs> It's just, it's just what I do. And that's what knitting is actually right now for me. Knitting is that thing that keeps my hands busy, lets my mind drift, lets me plan my next day. I'm not a knitter. I will not do a knitting tutorial. I'm not, I'm not a pro. It's not what I do. You know, um, and so I get to just sit here. I love to wear beanies. If you can't really see, but that's covered <laughs> back here in beanies. I got beanies all over the wall. <laughs> I'm just trying to make myself a hat. That's all I'm working on here with this, you know. Um, but the strips I was sewing today for the quilt that will be a tutorial that I'll go film on May 30th, that I had to stay focused. I had to deal with it. And I wasn't pulling through the design very well today. So I decided, okay, well, I'll start making more and more of these parts because I don't know exactly how I'm going to finish the design. So juggling the difference between being a pro artist and being a functioning artist are, are tough. Oh, those are very good strategies. I like how you said to do something, you know, so maybe like sew something for yourself that doesn't end up on your blog, yeah. that isn't, isn't, you know, part of everything. It's just for you. That's very good advice. Right. Um, we have another question from Isla. How to quilt fabric for a garment? How do or would you determine the yard? Got it. Okay. So Isla, here's what you want to do. Let's say it's going to take you two and a quarter yards to make a vest. Or what, I mean, no, that's an awful lot. It's like one and a quarter yards. So just so you know, I do this stuff. Um, so you're going to actually take, and if you want it to be reversible, take the fabric you want for one side, the fabric you want for the other, and sandwich them with the right sides facing out with the batting in the middle and machine quilt it all as a big chunk of yardage. And then you cut your vest pattern out of that or your shirt pattern out of that. And then you begin construction of the project out of quilted fabric is one technique mm -hmm. some folks will design a outer portion of the garment as a seam and i see a lot of this with vests and they'll make a, a, a seascape vest on the outside and they lay it all out and then once they have all the layers together they'll put like a thermal lamp or some sort of lightweight fusible fleece or something inside of it. And then they'll machine quilt that after they've turned it back to right sides out before they finish it at the bottom. So there's two different approaches. You can either make your fabric as like pre-quilted fabric you'd buy in a store, just make it out of your yardage. And uh, to answer the second half of the question, you might want to, of course, pre-wash everything. So if your pattern normally calls for two and a half yards, you know, buy three yards, pre-wash it. Um, and then, Stitch it big and let it run big and then cut it down if you're concerned that the pattern will um, not fit. If you quilt things, if you don't know this, uh, as you quilt stuff, sometimes it draws in a little bit. So if you cut it to be very tailored, unquilted, then you quilted it, it might be even more slim than you expected. Cool. Great advice. Uh, it looks like uh, Isla has a follow-up question. Isla, do you want to come on camera? Don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, she might be a little shy. Maybe we caught her in her pajamas, Rob. Sure, okay. she said. Okay. <laughs> so let's see if, if she clicks on the button. We'll get her in here. Okay, here she comes. Hey, hey, look at that. <laughs> Beauty of technology. 
Yeah. <laughs> it works, okay? Yeah. Right, right. So my question was, you know, like if I wanted to, uh, like if you were to make a make a quilt, okay. you squares or designs, and you piece them together, and then I would go back and take a pattern and cut that. That would be my fabric. Yes. So if I wanted to make a say a a, a swing jacket, okay. okay. Maybe that takes two and a half to three yards. Right. But now I want to have to create a design and I want to cut all these squares together, all these triangles, whatever. So how much of that to build that three yards that I need sure. hope to be the fabric? Does that make sense? It does. And it's a great question, by the way. Um, so there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. As a quilter, you're taking a quarter inch seam allowances between both pieces. So for every one seam, you lose a half of an inch. So if you wanted to have five inch stripes in your garment, you're going to use maybe 10 seam allowances. But if you wanted two stripes, excuse me, two inch stripes, you're going to use maybe 20 seam allowances. So the more seam allowances, the more yardage gets consumed. So one of the things I try to teach is something that I have to tell myself, let's not overthink it. Let's, let's take the, the, the concept and you want your squares to be all two inch squares. So you could just cut out a bunch of two inch squares, maybe starting from your stash, put all those two inch squares together until they're that quilted portion of all the two inch squares now equals the three yards we wanted originally to cut out the garment. What's difficult it, 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 to answer your question would be is if it's a wall hanging and it wants you to get six different fabrics and it wants you to get a half a yard of each of the six different fabrics, is that wall hanging going to be enough to make a garment out of? So is a half a yard of six different fabrics enough to make your garment too? So a lot of us will take something like maybe we'll create a sample block. Again, I'm going back to a vest or a jacket. Uh, same could be if you wanted to make a quilted purse. You make your block and kind of figure out what that's going to do for you. And then you can kind of fill in the yardage around. So I let, it's a little difficult to give you a ratio. Okay. I can tell you the more seam allowances, the more yardage you'll need. Um, it, you're going to be pre-washing as well because it's for garment. So I would assume that you're going to probably need a good 10 to 15% more fabric than you would expect. So maybe if your pattern for the garment called for two yards you would want to have two and a quarter yards something like that of of parts and pieces to put together that would then become big enough that you can make your your pattern cut from the quilted fabric out of okay yeah so sorry it's not it, it really depends on the design you want to use because yeah. you can do quilted garment out of two layers of solid fabrics too you could just do all the quilting as, as thread painting or something like that. But also keep in mind the stitching will, will shrink things in a little bit too. So always best to do as much of the work prior to the final cutting and final assembly if it's going to be tailored. Okay. And a lot to take into account, really. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If it's like a you know a couple of design pieces, that's great. I wouldn't do a whole line of that because right. I'm going to be dead before I finish it all. Yeah. <laughs> You can always make yourself a yarn bucket, Isla. These are popular today. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on with us. How fun right. is it? Thanks, Isla. Nice seeing you. <laughs> so, uh, Rob. Yes. Uh, we are just, I guess, we're past our time, sorry. Um, we've oh, taken we're into the more. rerun hour. I know. We're, we've taken up more of your time than we meant to. Um, it was just fantastic having you on the show. Is there anything that you'd like to, any advice to leave us with or definitely Gosh. check out your next tutorial? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, check out Man Sewing and you can, if it's easy, go to mansewing.com and you can follow all the links to all the other venues to social media that way. Um, but what's funny though, I was looking early, I was, I was lurking, trying to make sure I was ready for the show. And I noticed that a lot of the folks that were logged in early were more proclaimed and more the garment side of stuff. And I think that a lot of us get overwhelmed by quilting. Um, they think that it's some completely different beast. It's a, it's a spacecraft versus just another airplane. And it, it really is, it's quite easy. And because of this whole wonderful birth of what we call modern quilting, which is kind of a no rules format of quilting, 
Um, I encourage people to try it, but I encourage people to start on a project that looks like something that is achievable, that looks like it's something that they're interested in doing, something that they really want to finish, because there are a few different steps along the way. It's not an overnight project. It's not a pot holder or an apron, you know? And yeah. so you want to make sure you're going to stay motivated. And I, I know I keep going back to my knitting thing and I know it's ridiculous, but I'm making a hat because I like hats. So that's, I, I'm motivated to finish it because it, I want a hat. I don't care to wear scarves very often. It, I have the one hanging on my shelf back there. So, that, you know, that's my advice to our quilt, our, our quilting wannabes, the people that want to give it a try, that have been nervous about trying it. Start with something very easy and be aware that in machine, that in quilting, there's like five or six different avenues that you can go down that are not, you don't have to be the completed project. You don't have to do all the steps. Some people love, building the designs for the quilt tops. Then they farm it out to be quilted. Some people like to do the machine quilting. They don't like the patchwork. So they just get machine quilting machines and they do the quilting for everybody in their community. Um, some people just love picking out the color. Some people love the community. I know a lot of people that go to these quilt guilds and they just assemble quilts because they love the outreach of giving a warm something to a person in need. So there's a lot of awesome. avenues within quilting that are really awesome. And you're not going to be fantastic the first time you try it. So try it. Don't worry about the end results and um, find something you're interested in and, and, and go down that route and use YouTube as a, a resource. There must be 20 or 30 fantastic um, channels out there for quilting and sewing and knitting and all kinds of stuff that I can think of that I visit. You know, I mean, of course, I think mine is great. I think that Jenny Dones from Missouri Star and Vanessa um, from Crafty Gemini are all fantastic channels. There's a lot of content out there, but there's some other fantastic educators out there that have styles that maybe fit everybody better. So just keep learning, keep, keep pushing yourselves, keep being creative. And uh, thanks for spending the afternoon with us. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to your next uh, tutorial, and thank you very much for coming on, Alethea. I think you're still here. I can't see you, but um, do you, are you there? I'm still here. I'm seeing ghosts right now. This horrible connection. Oh no! I don't didn't know if you wanted to say anything before we uh, stopped hitting record. <laughs> well, um. I don't know. I know uh, Rob has to go, but Rob, thank you so much. I've enjoyed this interview with you. I've enjoyed talking with you. I learned a lot about you. Um, some things I did not know about you. Very fascinating. So um, I'm very <laughs> excited about this, uh, uh, of this interview tonight. So thank you for being a part. Thank you for saying yes. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Okay. Well, uh, and thank you to everyone who came to watch. I always look up at the little eggs above our head. Thank you to everyone who came to right. watch tonight and everyone who catches the replay. We really appreciate it. And thanks again. So I'm going to log off. I hope everyone has a great night. Thanks, right. Rob. Bye. Bye. Bye.